Hello, Albert. Good afternoon and welcome to Media Life here on TV3. My name is Park Kwesiasari, bringing you the very latest news in business, sports and international news. And coming up... Law enforcement agencies taxed to ensure laws regulating drug importation and usage in the country are enforced. Also on the international front, the chief of staff of Ethiopian army has been shot dead by his own bodyguard in the capital Addis Ababa. We've got details of all these stories plus many more coming up in the next 30 minutes. We're streaming live on Facebook. You can join us with your views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. Now, President Kufuadu has announced that Navrongo Campus for the University of Development Studies in the Upper East region will be named after the late founding member of the new patriotic party, Clement Tedam. It will be known as the C.K. Tedam University of Technology and Applied Sciences uh, pending parliamentary approval. A bill... Uh, this is in regard said uh, it was currently before Parliament. The President Kufado disclosed this in Paga in the Kasina Nankana West District in the Upper East Region in his tribute at the burial of C.K. Tedam on Saturday. President Kufado described the late C.K. Tedam as a rock whose contribution to the NPP and Ghana cannot be underestimated. C.K. Tedam was born on 25th November 1925 uh, to Pet Tedam and Kawuri Tedam. He became a member of the Paga Local Council and a member of the Kasina Nankana District Assembly from 1952 to 1954. Uh, C.K. Tedam entered the political scene in 1954 as a member of the Legislative Assembly and was elected into Parliament as an independent candidate. He later co-founded the Northern People's Party with uh, Mumuni Baumia, Na Abeifa Kabo, J.B. Braima, uh, Tolona Yakubu Tali, Adam Amandi, Imoro uh, Salifu with Simon uh, Didon Dombo as the head of the party. He became a member of the Gold Coast Legislative Assembly between 1954 and 1956 and again on the United Party uh, later in 1956 uh, to March 6, 1957. So let's take a listen now to President Anadu Dankwa Kufado uh, reading his tributes where he announced the Navrongo campus of the University for Development Studies will be named after the late founding member of the new patriotic party, uh, C.K. Tedam. C.K. Tedam means a big word, not only in the MPP family and in the Ghanaian nation. I will miss him dearly. In the sitting of Parliament, a bill seeking to create an autonomous university out of the Navrongo campus of the University of Development Stuff will be laid. Once the parliamentary processes are completed, it will be referred to as the C.K. Tedham University of Technology and Applied Science. Away from that, a senior lecturer at the Department of Psychology of the University of Ghana, Dr. Wiafi Akenten Brenya, has charged law enforcement agencies to ensure laws that regulate drug importation and uses in the country work, speaking at the Ghana Pharma Forum, aimed at finding practical solutions to curb drug abuse in the country. Dr. Wiafi noted that the cases of drug abuse will continue to increase if mandated agencies fail to, to enforce the law. A drug is any substance that causes a change in an organism's physiology or psychology when consumed. They are typically distinguished from food and substances that provide nutritional support. While Ghana's laws allow the usage of drugs including alcohol, caffeine and tobacco, it frowns on cannabis, cocaine and heroin. There are laws that regulate importation and usage of drugs into the country, but enforcement has become a major problem. Statistics show that youth between the ages of 10 and 12 years have been engaging in illegal drug usage. The roots of the alarming rate of abuse, especially among the youth, can be traced to high unemployment. Speaking at this year's Ghana Pharma Forum, targeted at finding practical solutions to curb drug abuse in the country, 
a senior lecturer at the Department of Psychology at the University of Ghana, Dr. Riafia Kenton Brenya, noted that cases of drug abuse will continue to increase if the law enforcement is not done. Law enforcement is important, but I think it should be preceded by the education, by the sensitization. Then, after that, the support. Then those who continue, let's punish them. And I think that it is not always that we have to send them even to prison. We can give them community work. Some people push, they don't take it. You know, or if you are found on, on you, if you need rehabilitation, after the assessment, they will know. But if you don't need it and we want to punish you, there should be a way punishment must be felt. Principal inspecting pharmacist at the Pharmacy Council, Trebi Kwao, expressed worry over the increasing rate of drug abuse in the country. He called for intensive education, especially in the schools. A substance abuse, we can't say it's going down. It's still on the rise. As we try to control some more substances are coming. And I spoke about even the internet that uh, puts out a lot of information out and our young ones would like to try them and then they get hooked to these uh, behaviors. So we have a battle ahead of us. A senior regulatory officer at the Tobacco and Substance Abuse Department of the Ghana Standard Authority, Julia Mankwamafo, noted the firm is adopting new measures that will help deal with the situation. It's not only tobacco or no, um, tramol or codeine or whichever one you find yourself glued to, but tobacco is bad. These give harmful effects. For instance, there are cancer-causing agents in this tobacco product, which is over 70. On his part, the spokesperson for the National Chief Imam, Sheikh Karim Yao Shaibu, charged parents to educate their children on choices they make. Meanwhile, the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Anthony Ntiasari, has hinted of plans to bar health service workers from using mobile phones while on duty. This is to ensure discipline at the health centers during service delivery. He made the revelation at the inauguration ceremony of some three polyclinics in the Greater Accra region. The three polyclinics are each located at Sege in the Adan West District, Community 22, Ashaiman, and Ogbojo, Adentan, all in the Greater Accra region. The facility is among the five polyclinics government secured a 13.5 million euros loan to construct. They were built in partnership with the Australian government to pursue the country's goal of achieving the Sustainable Development Goal 3 of universal health coverage for all by 2030. The 30 bed capacity facilities with the same architectural design are to provide OPD services, diagnostics, maternity and pediatric care, and general consultation. The Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Anthony Insian Sari, said the practice of health service workers using their phones while attending to patients is becoming a serious issue that must be dealt with. He fears the distraction from the phones contributes to the wrong administration of drugs to patients. The use of mobile phone first doesn't show any respect, especially when you are seeing somebody. The use of mobile phone distracts you. Mobile phones also have some vibrational effects on some of the gadgets. I've sent a message around and I think I'm going to enforce it. The best way outside in other degradation is that you enter a facility like this, the networks don't work. The Minister of Health, Kweku Ajimanmenu, used the occasion to debunk claims that government has abandoned health projects started by the previous administration. The passion on the Minister for Health for abandoning projects that were started. This is enough evidence. When we came, there was not a single block here. Whatever the previous government did was in the drawing room. But even that, we didn't abandon the project. Now that did we relocate to anywhere. Now they have started talking that Nana Kufuadwa, his government, have borrowed so much and they don't know what we have done with the money. This is one of them. Some residents share their joy about the construction of the polyclinics in their vicinities. <laughs> We are very happy with the location of the clinic. Please attend to us with care when we come. 
The facilities are to complement other health centers in the district to improve health care delivery. A reminder, you're still watching Media Life here on TV3. We're streaming live on Facebook. We're also very active on social media. Uh, 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 our handle is uh, TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, a gender advocate, Joanna Opari, wants government to speed up the process of passing the Affirmative Action Bill. At a workshop in Accra, the executive director of Gender Planning Consult said the bill, when passed into law, will ensure gender equality in almost all spheres of national development. Abantu for Development, with support from African Women's Development Fund, engaged with Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection on the status of their affirmative action bill was developed around 1998 but is yet to be passed into law. Ghana has been working the drafting on the affirmative action bill in response to its mandate to pass an affirmative action law stated in Article 4 and 7 of the Convention on the Elimination of All Discrimination Against Women. The Executive Director, Gender of Planning Consults Limited, Joanna Opare, urged women and men to come on board to tackle gender inequalities. We, we are sending messages to the president, we are sending messages to parliament, we are going to strategize to ensure that this bill will be passed into law. And it is an opportunity for us because our president has promised us long ago that he will pass this bill. So whatever is needed for us to put the boats and mass together to ensure that this bill now goes to parliament for it to be tabled on the floor of parliament and go through all the processes so that it is passed into a law is what we have met here to do. She indicated that funding and lack of support from government is a major challenge. Lack of political will and all our cultural issues that come to play when it has to do mostly with women. But the, this bill, although it's affirmative action towards increasing the number of women in decision making, at the end of the day will benefit everybody. Director, Department of Gender, Children and Social Protection, Dr. Comfort Asari, disclosed that the affirmative action bill will be processed as soon as possible. We are working very hard and I see the way forward as us all getting committed to pushing the bill strongly for it to move on from the ministry to cabinet and to parliament. This year's workshop was under the theme Strengthening Advocacy for the Passage of Affirmative Action Law in Ghana. Now, management of the state shelter for abused children is seeking public support in tracing relatives of some vulnerable children. The children aged between 8 and 15 have been brought to the attention of the home under various conditions, but efforts at tracing their relatives have not yielded any positive results. Eight-year-old Kobe Ganza was sent to the shelter on June 18 after he was spotted loitering around Pantan, Accra. Michael Kwekuapia, 10 years, was found loitering around Odoko official town near Success International School on the same day, June 18. Nine-year-old Abeko was found at Usu on April 23, whilst 11-year-old Junior was brought from Wager Waterworks on June 19. Shakira Abubakar, 11 years, was found loitering around Taifa on April 2 this year, whilst Juan Latele Latte, 13, was brought from Afenia on April 18. Cecilia Vida Mamifua Williams was found at Koshikuma on March 18. Mamiya, on the other hand, has been at the shelter since November 19 last year. Ramatu Idris, 13, who was found loitering at Kokompe on May 13 this year, claimed she was schooling at Nuria Islamic School in Ho. Whilst nine-year-old Mariam Inusa was found loitering around Fadama, Charity Amo, 12 years, was found at Agona on May 6. Ten-year-old Evelyn Yamwa, on the other hand, was found at Agape Down on June 19. Anyone who can identify any of these children or know their relatives should please contact the state shelter for abused children or the nearest police station to assist. A reminder, you're still watching Media Life here on TV3.
All right, so welcome to the business news segment here on Midday Live. Now, Ghana loses $50 million due to illegal fishing activities by foreign trawlers in our waters. President of the Chamber of Agri Executives, Anthony Morrison, says this requires swift intervention by government as a country risks losing its fish stock by 2035. An investigative piece published on June 17, 2019 by the Environmental Justice Foundation revealed that cycle fishing, whereby trawlers target the staple catch of Ghanaian canoe fishes and sell it back to fishing communities at a profit, landed approximately 100,000 tons of fish in 2017 worth $50 million when sold at sea and up to $81 million when sold at port. The incomes of small-scale fishers have dropped by as much as 40% in the past 10 to 15 years, and Ghana is now forced to import more than half of fish consumed. Scientists have warned that stocks could be completely destroyed as early as 2020 if the practice is not curtailed. The findings are very um, awakening in that um, the consequences on the country uh, very um, dreading because um, there will be lots of jobs, there will be lots of uh, social and economic uh, viability of fishing communities. Um, there might be certain migration because uh, they wouldn't have access to what they have been doing for all their lives. President of the Chamber of Agri Executives, Anthony Morrison, says government should enforce the laws to keep the practice. We need to enforce our laws. It's very important. We need to enforce our laws. Secondly, we need to protect our resources because once the resources are depleting or they deplete, there is nothing we can do to replenish it because um, there, is no, there are scientific uh, work that has been done on marine population, but um, we have not seen it's actualizing. The report indicated that almost two-thirds of the Chinese vessels fishing in West African waters are fishing illegally, costing billions of dollars in lost revenue and rapidly depleting fish stocks. Away from fishing, implementation of levies on luxury vehicles has not generated the required revenue to government since its inception last year. Government had projected to realize over 100 million cities by the first quarter of this year. However, figures show a paltry 30 million cities has so far been collected since January and could likely throw government's revenue targets out of gear. The luxury vehicle levy is an annual levy on vehicles with high engine capacities. The implementation of this law took effect from the 1st of August 2018. Vehicles with engine capacity of 2,950 cubic centimeters and more are required to pay respective levies. However, revenue collected for the first quarter was about 30.19 million CDs against a target of 136.53 million CDs. This makes a shortfall of 106.34 million cities, which represent 77.89% decline, according to a provisional fiscal data from the Ministry of Finance released on June 17. The development, according to Economies with Data Bank, Karich Kinslimati, is likely to threaten the government's annual revenue target of 598.13 million cities for the levy. Well, the shortfalls are significant. Um, in 2018, between August and end year 2018, the target was to raise 104 million cities. We raised about 21 million cities. Now, in the first quarter of this year, on the same luxury vehicle um, um, levy, we're targeting about 136 million cities for the quarter of, first quarter of this year. We raised 30 million cities. So the shortfalls are huge. It raises question on whether this tax in itself is really going to generate the necessary outstanding. Further analysis of the data on public finance indicated that there was a revenue shortfall for every month since January. Courage Kings Limati says the policy may have to be reviewed considering that government has failed to realize its intentions. If it's not going to provide the necessary outing, yet it would cause an increase in expenditure, then it could derail the fiscal outlook. Then also the stakeholders in that sector, particularly the traders who 
buy and sell this particular commodity are beginning to raise questions of how it is affecting their business. Now, if it is negatively affecting their business and it is not generating enough revenue for the government, does that fall within the category of news and stacks? Many have questioned the basis of such a policy, prompting agitations by truck drivers. In February this year, six groups staged a demonstration against the luxury vehicle tax in Accra. They drove their vehicles in a convoy through principal streets, protesting the levy which was introduced by government in August 2018. And I'm black and proud. Thanks for watching me the live here on TV3. For more news, you can log on to website www.3news.com. My name is Pa Chris Yassari.